Why safety in the workplace is important. There are a lot of reasons. For one, you need to provide a safer place to work for your workforce. Second, business will operate with no stoppage due to accidents. Third, it will enhance your reputation, which means more projects for your company. Every company would always aspire to build a hazard-free workplace. To reinforce the safety campaign of companies, the Takminoy Loud and Proud brings you an online learning session for safety practitioners and safety officers. Safety, safety Talk. Talk, Saturday nights, Dubai time. Safety Talk is hosted by veteran broadcaster Kabayan Rico Cardoniga. 2017, New Media Personality of the Year of the Filipino Times. 2017 and 2018, Top 100 Most Influential Filipinos in the Gulf Region by Illustrato Magazine. The official gym announcer of the Dubai International Basketball Tournament for five years. Professional announcer and host of events in the United Arab Emirates. A live wire motivational speaker. The television endorser of day-to-day -day chain of stores. Brand ambassador of LBC Express. The author of the book, The 12 Habits of Highly Successful OFWs. And the founder of the Tak Pinoy Loud and Proud. Safety, safety Talk. Talk. The online learning session for safety officers and HSE practitioners. Live on the Tak Pinoy Loud and Proud. Here now is this week's episode of Safety Talk, hosted by Kabayan Rico. Well, it's Saturday night once again, and it's once again time to grow and learn because we are back with more insights as far as safety is concerned. Welcome back to our weekly online session safety talk and joining me tonight oh we have a competent person magaling ito at marami tayong matutunan i'd like to introduce our resource speaker for tonight kaya ang tabayan ninyo kilalang kilala if you are into the field of health and safety kilalang kilala ninyo ang ating resource speaker for tonight our resource speaker tonight has more than 12 years experience in the field of health and safety apart from his wealth of experience he is a certified and competent hse professional with the following qualifications a certified occupational health and safety professional by the osha academy usa a certified occupational safety and health trainer by completing the train the trainer course of the OSHA Academy USA, completed the Occupational Safety and Health Manager from the OSHA Academy, completed the Safety Committee Chair from the OSHA Academy, a Certified Occupational Safety and Health Specialist by the Edulines Envis Infosol based in Abu Dhabi, completed Environmental Management System ISO 14001-2015 Lead Auditor Course, Completed the Rigging and Slinging Safety Course by Advitig Abu Dhabi, passed the Oshad Kudarat HSE Practitioner Course, completed IOS Managing Safely, completed the course for Accident and Incident Investigation, finished the Basic and Advanced First Aid Course, completed the Basic Five Course, passed with credit, the Nibos IGC, and many more. Currently employed with the in a QAA desalination plan project for Om Al Quain as client client HSE supervisor. It's uh, really a pleasure to have with us tonight, Mr. Warren Natividad. Uh, War, magandang gabi dyan. Ay, magandang gabi rin sa'yo, Rico, at sa lahat oh. ng mga nanonood. Welcome back. Oh, salamat. Na, uh, na, Rico. If yes. I may, gusto ko munang batiin ang aking mag-iina na nanonood ngayon. Si of course, of course. Normie Natividad, ang aking panganay na si Yuri Natividad, at ang aming bunso na si Alec Natividad. Uh, nanonood sila and they will try to, especially my boys, 
na apparently hindi sila ganong nagtatagalog but I will try to convey the messages or convey the explanations <laughs> in English. At uh, binabati ko rin ng mga taga Hasyan um, Power Plant Project. Uh, mayroon kami tinatawag dyan ng mga Filipino Mafia. Binabati ko kayong lahat. Oh, at sa lahat ng mga nakikinig ng mga kaibigan at kakilala natin. Mga estudyante mo, batiin mo rin. Oh, yung mga estudyante ko from OSEC. Uh, nandiyan dyan sila Danny Bagadyong, si Ryan Nambug, si Philip, at uh, marami pang iba. Medyo hindi ako ganong familiar na sa mga names. Yan. At si Kempe, uh, si Mr. Anthony at si Ma'am Gretchen ng OSEC. Of course, of course ang, ang walang kapagod-pagod na tandem ng uh, OSEC. Uh, no? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Maswerte itong mga nanonood sa atin, War, because they will be learning a lot for, with the uh, competent resource speakers that we have here on uh, Tatak Pinoy's uh, Safety Talk. Kaya ito na yung pagkakataon nila na matuto talaga kasi hindi naman lahat na makapag-attend ng seminar considering lalo na yung mga mga nibos at ayos no uh, especially mm-hmm. with the present pandemic uh, hindi lahat pwedeng maka maka-afford oo no? nga so, so, I hope na so, tayo oh uh, at saka kung yung mga nanonood paki-share po ng video para yung mga kaibigan nating safety practitioner will have the the opportunity to learn sa ating discussion ngayong gabi. Uh, umpisahan na natin, War. Um, yes. For the past uh, several months, I always mentioned that accidents in the workplace happen because of unsafe condition and unsafe act. No? Yun talaga. And uh, of the two, ang common denominator talaga niyan is the human error. No? So, Correct. Correct. Um, para sa you, War, what are the ways to reduce the likelihood of human error in the workplace? Um, sa ating previous na session, no, o yung sa ating previous na talk, I discussed about ITIS. I would still tell everyone to instill, enforce, improve ang ating implementation ng ITIS. Kasi, as, as I've said before, ang information, lagi naman nandiyan dyan yan. Kung meron kayong bagong equipment, bagong billing equipment, it always comes along with um, uh, an operator's manual. Meron siyang brochure kung paano gamitin at paano ingatan, paano store ang isang equipment. By that alone, it's a source of information. Tapos kapag ka may mga materials kayo, especially katulad ng mga hazardous substances, it always comes along with an MSDS. What is an MSDS? Ito yung tinatawag nating material safety data sheet. Nandiyan dyan lahat ng means of handling, transport, um, shifting to a secondary container, ano ang yung dapat gawin in case na magkaroon ka ng accidental contact or spillage, spillage control, storage, at disposal. So yung mga ganyang bagay, kailangan dinidiscuss nyo sa mga tao natin yan. Hindi man kayang i-discuss ng mga supervisors or ng mga storekeeper. At least kung from our side, mga, si- mga safety practitioners, kaya nating i-brought about sa kanila ang importansya ng mga information na yon. I'm quite sure na magagamit nila yung kanilang mga kagamitan, kaganilang mat- materyales ng ligtas. Pangalawa, ang ating training. Kung meron kayong mga uh, handling of uh, hazardous substances, hindi lang training sa paano paggamit. Kailangan bigyan nyo rin ng training ng tao kung paano i-control ang spillage. Kasi malaking bagay yan. Part ng ating profesyon ay pag-ingatan ang kalikasan o no? tinatawag nating environment. Susunod, ang ating instructions. Kailangan ang ang kumpanya dapat talaga kumukuha ng mga competent na supervisors, engineers, or foreman. Kasi kaya nilang ibigay yung tamang instruction sa worker. Ngayon, bilang safety officer, pwede ka rin magbigay ng mga instruction. In what terms? Instruction in how to follow the regulations. 
Pagka sinabi natin magtatrabaho kay sa taas, make sure na meron kayong full protection. Make sure na meron kayong full arrest system. Turuan nyo sila kung paano isuot, paano tanggalin ng safety harness. At lastly, dapat talaga laging may supervision. Hindi ka po pwedeng magpatrabaho ng walang supervision. Or at least, kung meron ka mang grupo ng apat na katao, appoint a lead person na nakakaintindi ng drawing, ng instructions, ng manuals, at somehow meron din siyang knowledge about the regulations. So, kapag ka na-enforce mo ang ITIS, you can guarantee about 60 to 70% of a safe working environment, safe worker, safe equipment. So, yan ang aking ibibigay na payo para sa pag, pagkakaroon ng mas ligtas na lugar ng paggawa. Um, uh, ever since, siguro, hindi naman na uh, Uh, nakakalimutan ng mga safety officer nating mga kaibigan war that the, the basic thing that they need to know is to spot the hazard in the workplace kasi yun talaga ang, ang basic no uh, kaya nga sa sa stages of risk assessment una talaga is yung hazard spotting pero bakit yung mga iba war is uh, nakaligtaan pa rin pa rin nila na makita yung hazard in a workplace. Ano sa tingin mo ang reason why uh, in spite of the fact that uh, alam nila na meron ng hazard in that particular area, um, he, they don't have the seriousness to identify or probably they underestimated the hazard. Um, ano sa tingin mo ang, ang reason? Ah, well, ang napapansin ko mostly ngayon sa mga kasi nga, I am a safety advisor para sa client. So, I usually go around the site looking for hazards as well. But, my main focus is on the functionality of the safety officers of our subcontractors. So, ang na-notice ko sa mga karamihan ng mga safety officers is that they go around empty-handed. Wala sila ni isang checklist man lang. At least, kunyari, nabigay sa iyo ang area na merong excavation. So, bago ka pumunta doon, make sure na meron kang isang maliit na checklist kung ano yung dapat mong check-in. Check-in mo kung meron silang PTW. Check. Meron ba silang supervisor? Check. Doon sa kanilang PTW, na-identify ba ang type of soil na i-excavate? Check. Kung na-identify ang type of soil, na-identify ba ang tamang protection para sa collapse. Meron silang benching, shoring, sheet piling, or kung ano pang dapat na nilang gamitin para ma-prevent ang collapse. So marami sa mga safety officers na nakikita ko, mag, hindi lang sa mga ibang nationalities, maging sa kapwa natin Pilipino. Uh, we, go, we go out empty-handed. Medyo magkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag na blinkered inspection. Alam mo yon yung kapag ka wala kang basihan, naglalakad ka, blinkered meaning kumukurap ka, di ba? Paglakad mo, kumurap ka saglit, meron kang hindi nakita, nalampasan mo na agad. Pero kung meron kang checklist, pwede mong istimahin isa-isa. At the same time, sa checklist, while doing while doing your checklist, going along with your checklist, you will you will also find more because the checklist will keep you focused sa iyong trabaho. So, ang hazard spotting mo ay mas nagiging uh, efficient, maybe more accurate than before. So, mas nalilesen nyo ang mga hazard. Kasi, tandaan natin, hazards has to be eliminated, risks has to be controlled, and consequences needs to be reduced or the level of the con or the severity of the consequence. So I I'm saying na let's try to go out with a simple um, weapon sa pag inspection which is your checklist. So the, it it boils down to one issue pag walang uh, 
IITS, no? lalo na pag mga baguhang safety officer, then it will happen yung sabi mo na blinkered inspection. Mangyayari talaga yan. No? Oo, for sure. For sure yan. Especially kasi, if yung manager naman is not competent as far as health and safety. Kasi um, whether you like it or not, uh, managers become managers for so many reasons, di ba? Uh, uh, probably they, they are related to the boss. Sometimes hmm. uh, they did a good job in the past. Uh, ang pinakamaganda talaga is yung manager because competent, di ba? Oh, Hindi yung uh, because of the affinity to the powers that be. Kaya... Ang safety culture will really determine kung yung mga officer natin talaga may alam. Which is, they need to have knowledge because at stake mga lives ng workers. Katulad doon sa Cebu, nangyari recently, I think two, three weeks ago, war, na mm-hmm. pinakulog, working at heights. No? Oh my God. So, na, na, it's a sad reality. Pero hmm. bakit nangyayari yun? No? Kaya... Yun nga, ang sabi mo, tama ka talaga kasi i- i- yung blinkered inspection ang mangyayari without the checklist, walang mangyayari. Oo, oh. no, oh, marami kang mamimiss marami, 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 oh. marami out. Meron tayong mga na- nanonood, war, mga fans mo ito eh. Oh. Albi oh. Ortiz, uh, Jeffrey Sapanta, Empoy Regalado, and from the Philippines, imagine, oh. what a clock in the morning, Mayoshete... Jan Day, sabi niya, watching from the Philippines, ang galing, daming napupulot na aral. No? It's nice to know that people are recognizing that we are sharing them information, especially we have competent uh, resource speaker every week. Kaya please share yung uh, live coverage natin uh, para naman uh, mabigyan natin ng aral yung iba. And by the way, mm-hmm. meron akong video on hazard identification na uh, You can see it, uh, my page, Kabayan Rico EMC. Paki like and follow. Marami tayong mga videos there, motivational videos. So please, for those who are watching us, like and follow Kabayan Rico EMC. Meron akong uh, hazard identification video there. Now, but let's continue, War, kasi your time mm-hmm. is precious tonight. Kasi merong, marami nag-expect na marami silang aral na mapupulot dito ngayon. Um, so hopefully. Uh, um, meron akong eh, isa ding uh, concern kasi alam na natin na may mga empleyado talaga na although may alam na, no? But because of the, they are not actually motivated to follow the company's uh, rules as far as safety are concerned, medyo ayaw nilang gumalaw or they don't want to follow the instructions. Kay medyo, halimbawa, they are mistreated with the safety managers. So para mm-hmm. sa iyo, War, uh, what are the practical measures to be taken to motivate employees to comply with the health and safety procedures? Well, number one, kung magtat- uh, itatanong mo sa akin is paano i-motivate ang mga safety officers? One point, I mean, one good way is recognition. Kailangan kung, kunyari, nasa position ka, nakakatulad na sa akin, na they look up to us bilang, bilang the client of the project, a simple pat at the back, or ayayin mo siyang magkape, okay, let's sit down, I, you did well, so usap naman tayo, ano, ano pang mga balak mo, ano pang mga plano mo, and try to listen to him. Yung mga magiging comments niya, may it be hinaeng or uh, grievances or may it be suggestions or recommendations, see to it na you follow through. Kung hindi mo kayang ibigay sa kanya or hindi nyo kayang ibigay yung recommendation na gusto niyang ipatupad, pwede mo naman siyang sabihan na hindi yan applicable pa sa ating project. Meron tayong tinatawag na alarm medyo mataas yung gusto mong mangyari. I mean, show them na nakikinig ka to get them motivated with their work. Kasi, sad to say, ha, marami akong kakilala na talagang ang point of view nila is pera-pera lang yan. Ang hirap din may makausap na mga ganun na ang sasabihin nila is papasok kami, we will do as much kasi we are paid as much only. 
Tandaan natin na meron tayong mandato or meron tayong mandate na tinatawag na tayo ay ang tagapagsiguro ng uh, one thing, ah, ang nagkataon na ang ating profesyon is nakahilera sa sinimulan ng Gat Andres Bonifacio na KKK. Pero may sarili akong definition dyan. KKK meaning kaligtasan, kalusugan, at kalikasan. So, yan din yung HSE. Tayo ang mga taga sigurado, taga pagsunod, at taga pagtanggol para sa mga ating trabahante. So, bilang safety officer, ang una mong kailangan gawin is ma-recognize mo ang kanilang effort. Pangalawa, you have to be strict also with them. Kapag ka meron silang mga shortcomings or may na-deviate sa mga risk assessments or sa mga method and statements, kailangan you have to let them know. Hindi mo naman sila kailangan i-reprimand lagi. Let them know what what kind of shortcoming na nangyari. Explain to them kung paano nila i-overcome yun. Explain to them kung paano nila itatama yun. And maybe you can give them some sort of a reminder na kung sakasakali mauulit yan, then there will be some reprimand against you. At the same time, or ang tangpangatlong bagay na nakikita ko na pagkukulang ng mga management para ma-motivate ang mga HSE personnel nila is they tend to let the HSE officers be as they what as they are. Nag, nag, nawawalan siya ng opportunity to improve, walang development. Hindi na sila na ipapadala sa mga trainees. As we all know na medyo may 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 presyo ang pagkukuha ng training. So hindi lahat ng safety officer ay tumatanggap ng malaking halaga para makapag-engage sila sa mga trainings. Dapat ang mismong kumpanya ang magpadala or magbigay ng mga trainings for their improvement. Kasi gaya na sinabi ko sa inyo before, if you train your workers to work safe, tataas ang inyong productivity, tataas ang inyong reputation. So gaganda ang inyong profit. So dapat mag-engage din ang mga manager or ang mga management na ma-push na ang kanilang mga safety practitioners ay magkaroon ng continuous development. Dapat yan, gaya na sinabi ko before, dapat tinitingnan natin yan sa ating mga TNA, yung Training Needs Analysis. So those three factors, I think, kapag ka mai, may papasok natin sa isip ng ating mga kapwa safety practitioner, may it be Filipinos or other nationalities, eh, mas gaganda ang kanilang performance, mas magiging vigilant sila sa kanilang trabaho, at magkakaroon sila ng tinatawag natin balls para mag-implement or para mag-insure ng regulations. Recognition, reprimand, and trainings. Yan yung tatlong po pwede kong ipayo sa ngayon. Yan. Maganda yan. Maraming natutunan. It's nice to know that we have a very interactive uh, session tonight because uh, people are also active giving comments. Alves Montebello, he even mentioned that even we have competent managers, if the management is not even supporting the safety projects of the particular department, well, I mean, useless. Um, which is a sad scenario. Kaya nga yung... Uh, yung statement of uh, company policy should be signed by the the topmost mm. head to show commitment yes. unfortunately not all are committed to support no the effort of the safety department we also have uh, sony maranan rega- rewards and recognition client is also looking for a procedure tonight pakita natin yung mga kanila para ma-encourage naman yung mga ano yan um and uh Ito, from the Philippines. Yan, makikita natin na they are active. Uh, Vincent D. from Dubai. And of course, the the lady, the muse, the big boss of OSHEC, 
Uh, Chen is also watching. Oh. Hi, hi. Good evening, Miss Gretch. <laughs> <laughs> and and speaking of uh, Ushek, I I think this is the right time to let our viewers know in case they're planning to make a career shift to safety, they need to call um, Anthony or Chen and enroll in uh, the safety training because. The field of safety will change your life. Um, so, so, uh, what I wanted to say sa lahat ng mga safety practitioners, uh, mabuhay tayong lahat kasi ang trabaho natin is noble. May nobility sa ating trabaho. Ang mga doctors and nurses, not, not to undermine them, but they, they are there to fix tayo we are there to prevent. Kaya mabuhay tayong lahat. Ayan. Oh. You should be proud of your profession as a safety practitioner. Um, karamihan sa mga kaibigan natin who are in the field of safety are really complaining kasi it seems that yung mga management or may-ari talaga are not actually supporting in fact there is always a class between the, the 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 project manager and the safety department kasi yung safety talaga nagpapatigil if you will see that it's not safe to work pero sa kanila they are after on meeting the deadline no kaya mm -hmm. there is always a, a class ngayon uh, para naman malalaman ng mga safety practitioner natin na hindi na sila kabado war uh, they are well protected. Uh, would you like enumerating the responsibility of the employer? Para malaman ng mga safety practitioner naman na they are well protected and they should be protected. Well, mostly, ang isasagot sa iyan is uh, nibosh related answers. No, sa sabi nila sa yon ano ang responsibility ng employer? Employer is responsible to ensure that workers would have a safe working environment. Workers are ensured to have a safe working equipment. Workers are ensured to be using safe materials. Workers should be ensured to have welfare facilities at work. And employers should know and should follow the local legislations and rules. Okay, so yan ang responsibility laid out yan sa kahit na anong uh, standard na pwede natin sabihin. May it be the European standard, OSHAD, Dubai municipality, American standard or the OSHA standard, whatever. Lahat siya, yan, yan limang yan laging nadyadyad. But the thing is, ang responsibility talaga ng employer na hindi mo makikita kahit saan is listening. Isang bagay na hindi kayang ibigay ng mga employer or ng mga project managers, construction directors, listening to recommendations of the health and safety people or health and safety personnel sa isang project. So, ano ba ang kailangan natin gawin para, para tayo ay mapakinggan? Gaya na sinabi ko before, kung meron kang gustong i-recommend, kung meron kang gustong i-suggest para makabuti sa inyong proyekto, sa inyong trabaho, sa inyong lokal, always come up with a good ROI. Return of investment. Money, money talks and managers will listen. Kapag na, napakita mo sa kanila na malaki ang savings na maibibigay ng recommendation na ito, there is no way that they would not look back at you and, okay, explain to me. Let's let, write it all down. So, ayan, kailangan. Kailangan yung ma, maabot yung pakikinig ng inyong mga uh, kaamuamuhan or na kanyang mga managers. People are, oh, it's nice to know that more people are watching. Rick Hayes uh, from Abu Dhabi is watching. Abdul Nasar is watching. Kurt Sandoval. And, uh, and dami pang iba. 
Um, we would like to request those who are watching to please share the live segment that we have tonight para naman na uh, maibahagi natin sa mga kaibigan natin na halimbawa nag-work ba or they're doing something very important, uh, they can view the live segment that we have later on para naman na uh, hindi ma-left behind as far as knowledge are concerned. Um, it is a common knowledge war na pag may aksidente talaga, malaki ang babayaran ng kumpanya. Karamihan, ang alam tang talaga ng mga empleyado, especially those who are not really taking uh, safety courses seriously, hanggang blood money lang talaga ang nalalaman nila. So, uh, for, for the sake of informing our viewers, War, would you like to share the other cost to an organization following a workplace accident? Ah, sige. Um, let's try to approach this like ni Bosch again, no? Oh, so, para, sa, para sa isang, alam nila. Oh, sa isang insidente o aksidente, meron tayong tinatawag na direct cost and underlying costs. Yung mga blood money na yan, yung mga lost for the property, lost or damage to the goods, yan na yung ating mga tinatawag na mga direct cost. Now, kung familiar kayo sa Bulkang Taal, di ba? Yan yung bunganga lang, maliit lang. Pero ang kalakihan ng Bulkang Taal is pailalim sa dagat. Na yan naman yung magsasa- masasabi mong mga underlying costs. Ano yung mga underlying costs na yan? And dyan yung mga insurance premiums na magbabago. Paano ko i-explain ng insurance premium? Kung nyari, meron kang isang sasakyan na pina-insured mo ngayong taon na ito sa halagang 10 piso. Okay? Yung binayaran mo 10 piso, kung mat- mat- masisira yung sasakyan mo, matototal wreck na hindi na pwedeng gamitin, babayaran ka ng insurance company ng 20 piso. So talo sila ng 10 piso sa binayad mo. Sa palagay mo, with your same name, same driving license, magdadala ko uli ng sasakyan doon sa insurance company na yon. Do you expect na sisingilin ka nila uli ng 10 piso lang? Siyempre hindi na, di ba? Ang sisingilin nila sa'yo ngayon is something na dapat kumita sila sa'yo. Maaring singiling ka na nila ng 20 or 22 pesos. So, nadagdagan yung insurance premium mo. At the same time, yung sasakyan mo is, syempre magdodoble ingat ka na ngayon. Hindi na maaksidente yon, Hindi mo na bababawi yung 22 pesos mo. Insurance premium na yun. So, isa yan sa mga malalaking bagay na nagiging apekto sa inyong kumpanya kapag, kapag meron kayong mga aksidente. Bagay na hindi rin na nare-realize ng karamihan, gaya yung sinabi sa inyo, kapag ka may aksidente kayo, lalo na may nasaktan na ospital, na matay, unang-una dyan, yung, or yung pangalawang gastos dyan, na mas malaki pala, ay rehiring of a new employee. Alright? Retraining of that new employee. Tapos, yung kanyang reorientation sa trabaho. Siyempre, hindi siya kasing bilis nung taong naaksidente dahil bago din sa, sa trabaho. So, yung kanyang production is maybe half. And it will take some time bago niya makuha yung same production rate nung taong naalis, natanggal. At ang pinakamalaking bagay na hindi nakikita ng karamihan is yung pag nasira ang inyong reputasyon. Pag nasira ang inyong reputasyon, bababa ang bilang ng inyong mga kliyente. Pag bumaba ang bilang ng inyong mga kliyente, bababa, bababa ang bilang ng inyong mga proyekto. Bababa ang inyong production, bababa ang inyong kita. So, bababa ang kabuhayan ng inyong kumpanya. Which is mas malaki. Gaya ng sinasabi namin lagi, pagdating sa Nebosh or sa OSHA, sa OSHA, ang mga direct cost is just the tip of the iceberg. Ang underlying cost, yan yung talagang bibigay sa inyo ng malaking problema. Hindi ko pa binanggit dyan ng mga fines and penalties ha, because sometimes may mga fines and penalties na direct agad ibinabayad. Pero sa kalaunan, may mga, penal- may mga penalties pa kayong uling dapat na bayaran na mas malaki pa. Bigay, bibigay ako sa inyo ng example. Dito sa UAE, kapag ka ikaw bumangga 
at nasira mo ang isang date three, automatic meron kang fine and penalty sa RTA. Magbabayad ka agad sa traffic department for that particular accident. Meron agad certain amount yan. Alam ko, nasa around 500 to 1,000 dirhams. Pero later on, kapag ka naimbestigahan na yung puno na naitumba mo or na bangga mo is kailangan ng itumba at patay na, babayad ka naman ng bago para bunutin yung puno, babayad ka ng bago para bumili ng bagong puno, babayad ka pa rin para itanim yung bagong puno. Okay? So, malaki, mabigat ang underlying costs ng isang aksidente. Kaya as much as possible, talagang dapat natin yang iwasan. Um, yan talaga ang dapat malaman ng mga practitioners in the field of safety para alam nila kasi pag hindi mo alam yung mga bagay na yan, kabado tayo palagi. No? So, we, we are hesitant to also perform our work. But if you are well-versed and you are competent and you know everything that uh, Warren mentioned earlier, maging, kwan ka eh, uh, maging confident ka no? that uh, oh, the job right. that I am doing at present can save the lives and can can save uh, for the company and daming pera na masisave, no? Oo well, naman. At the same time, oh. when you see when you save money for the company, you're saving the company. You're still saving the lives of your co-workers kasi continuous ang livelihood niyo eh. Mm, exactly. Um and daming mga nanonood sa atin who are na very active as far as uh, giving comment. JJ Helter Brand is watching, oh. Um uh, Bino Odalia Del Baulos. I'm surprised we have new names appearing. Um Richard Lanusa and Falcon 7. Now, palagi na lang ito si Falcon 7. But uh, one thing I like with these people are they're also sharing their knowledge by giving comments. So if you think uh, you can share, just make a comment. People can see you. And uh, marami tayong matutulungan because learning is not only what we will hear from uh, our competent resource speaker, but also uh, from the comments of those who are watching us. Kasi meron oh, tayong that's... expertise bawat isa sa atin. Um, true, Warren, true. I, I, I'd like to open up kasi for, I, I think, two weeks ago, may, may sunog na naman, no? So, I'd like to open up this thing because sometimes we tend to overlook the the hazards that can cause fire in the workplace. Kaya, okay. um, isisingit ko lang uh, ito, no? So that uh, people will know, especially those who are new in the field of safety, Ano yung mga common causes of fire in the workplace war? Number one is kapag ka meron kayong hot works, which is using naked flame. Alright? Hindi mo po pwedeng hindi gawin, katulad ng heating. Kapag ka meron kayong heating activity using LPG gas, it could, be, it could cause fire. Now, ano yung pang ibang mga dapat mong tingnan, bantayan at manmanan kapag ka meron kayong ganyang activity? Make sure na sakto or tama ang inyong housekeeping practices. Remove all combustible flammable materials well within 5 meters on the circumference of your hot works activity. Ngayon, kapag ka hindi mo naman kayang tanggalin, make sure that you cover them up with fire retardant blankets or fire retardant, fire retardant materials. At the same time, kung hindi siya masisira, ensure na i-dampen nyo or basain nyo yung location. Secondly, ang usual na cause of fire is rekindling. Yung tinatawag nating nag-aapoy ulit. Kaya nga, di ba, meron tayo, ang number one na instruction sa ating mga fire watcher is after the hot works activity, make sure na bantayan mo yung location for another hour. Minimum 45 minutes to 1 hour. Lalo na kung tag-init, tuyong-tuyo ang mga gamit, tuyong-tuyo ang mga bagay, bantayan mo. Kasi nandiyan dyan ang rekindling. Maaring maliparan ng alipato, magbabaga uli yan pag nahanginan. At the same time, kakulangan sa mga fire control or fire fighting arrangements like your sun buckets, water buckets, fire extinguishers, fire blankets, or yung fire system. 
Ano pa yung ibang mga dahilan ng nagkukos ng fire? Kapag ka hindi nyo kontrolado ang inyong mga smokers or smoking materials, kung saan-saan nalang pinipitik ang kanilang mga, ang mga kanilang cigarette butts. Yung posporo, ako, kaya dun sa amin sa kahit saan man ako nagtrabaho, mas pinapaborang ko ang mga taong gumagamit ng lighter. Bakit ka mo? Pag nagsindi ka ng posporo, pag sindi mo ng sigarilyo, bibihira yung makikita mong papatayin pa. Pinipitik na lang agad yung palito. Maaring pumatak yun kung saan na merong combustible material. Di ba? So, ano pa ba ang iba na pwedeng pag, pagsimula ng sunog? Meron tayong tinatawag na electrically induced fire, yung mga electrical short circuits. At meron din tayo mga overheating, lalo na sa mga overheating equipment. Pagka hindi siya well ventilated, maaaring mag-overheat yan, magkaroon ng konting leak from your hydraulic oil, engine oil, or even your petrol or diesel, start na tayo ng fire. Okay, so yan ang mga common na pinanggagalingan ng sunog. Um, it's nice to know that we also have our friends from uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Jeffrey uh, Liesgam, uh, Magsali, okay? And also Carlo Olimbayero from North Africa. So well, we you are, are reaching farther now. So, uh, favor lang po, if you are watching, please share this live segment para marami po tayo mga safety practitioners na matulungan. And in case, while we are discussing, you have some points that you would like to to share as well, um, pwede kayong mag-comment lang so people can see you and they will appreciate uh, your commitment to share your knowledge as well. Um War, what are the methods of reducing the risk of fire in the workplace based on your opinion as a long-time safety practitioner? All right. Um, measures to mitigate or to control the um, incidents of fire. Number one, lagi dapat housekeeping. Okay? Housekeeping attributed yan sa napakaraming fire incidents sa mga construction sites. Second, control of smokers or smoking materials. Second or third, um, inspections, monitoring, and repair of equipment, especially electrically charged equipment. Kailangan regular ang inspection, regular ang repair, or on time ang mga repairs. Controlled hot works area by means of permit to work system or use your SSOW, safe systems of work. Kung hindi mo kontrolado ang iyong hot works, there could be so many catastrophic na events sa mangyayari. Pwedeng hindi lang fire, pwedeng explosion pa, lalo na kung gumagamit kayo ng mga LPG, at the same time ng oxygen na settling cutting. Alright? So, kailangan kontrolado nyo ang hot works. Kasi hindi naman po pwedeng walang hot works ang isang construction area. So, ensure na sa inyong safe system support ay naka-include ang PTW system. Training to workers engaged in hot works, signages, training of uh, fire watchers, training of fire wardens, Um, ano pa ba mga po pwede nating ilagay ng mga mitigation measures? Kasi kapag ka naggagawa ka, depende sa risk assessment. Lalo na kung gumagamit kayo ng mga hazardous substances na considered as flammable, make sure na ang inyong storage area ay well ventilated, gumagamit kayo ng low voltage lighting o low, low voltage electrical equipment do sa area na yon. Make sure na ang MSDS ay nakapost doon sa location na yon make sure na meron kayong adequate na firefighting system. Ano ibig sabihin ng adequate? Maraming nagtatalo dyan eh. Bakit hindi mo gamitin sa ruwari ng proper? Kasi kapag ka sinabi mong proper, proper is kung ano lang yung tama. Kunyari, kung meron kang fire, electrical fire, kailangan ang gagamitin mo ay carbon dioxide or dry powder. Yun yung klase. Eh sir, bakit hindi mo nalang gamitin sufficient? 
sufficient kasi ang tawag dyan is yung bilang, yung quantity. So, maaaring tama yung quantity pero mali yung quality or mali yung, bar- yung variety or yung type of fire extinguisher. Kaya, kapag ginamit mo yung salitang adequate, pinagko-combine mo appropriateness. Alright? Ano lang yun ha? Side, side comment lang yun. Pero para para siguradong magamit nyo ng tama yung inyong mga recommendation. Okay? So, going back, kapag meron kayong hazardous uh, materials sa inyong storage, ensure na ang storage area nyo ay walang combustible materials. Do not use wood. Do not use plastic tarpaulin. Kailangan lahat pirated. So, yan yung mga bagay na kailangan yung i-ensure para magkaroon tayo ng safer environment from fire. You know, while, while, while uh, listening to you, I'm also delighted to see that more and more people from outside the, the United Arab Emirates joining us on a weekly basis because I can see that we have friends from uh, Riyadh watching us, Arnold Likigan, and also from Damam, uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Nelson Lazona Chrysostomo Jr. And uh, I have to make a correction. It's uh, the Jeffrey Magsael, our and also Leandro Tuando and Luth Makins from Riyadh, uh, from the Philippines, King Natividad. So, oh, brother, ko yan. Oh, so it's nice really to to see that people are having a growth mindset to war. Otherwise, they won't waste their time watching and joining us tonight. So, these people can really Im- improve their craft, and uh, they will. Uh, reach the greater heights as far as safety industry is concerned. I and the good news is that you risk kanina war, no? So mm. uh, I'd like to also uh, touch the issue on uh, risk assessment because this is very important also for a safety practitioner. No? Mm-hmm. Um, what are the requirements to ensure the safe evacuation of a person from a building in the event of fire. Para sa'yo, because I'm sure you're conducting fire drill on a regular basis. Yes. Well. Mm. So, um, kapag gagawa ka ng risk assessment mo for your um, fire evacuation, we always go down to these five steps of risk assessment. Number one is identify the hazards of fire in this particular uh, subject. So, identify all your fire hazards. Alamin mo kung alin ma ang mga po pwedeng magsimula ng sunog, saan po pwedeng magsimula ang sunog. At the same time, or ang second part is identify people that will be faced in harm's way. Or identify the people who are susceptible for harm. Female workers, people with determina- determination, young workers, visitors, old workers. So, i-identify nyo, lalo na yung mga, kapag may female workers kayo, kung meron kayong pregnant women, kung may matatanda kayong mga workers, identify those hazards. Identify the hazards, identify the people that could get harmed. Alright? Third step is to apply the mitigation measures or assess those hazards, and apply your control measures. Paano nyo makokontrol? Kunyari, kung sa inyong evacuation, alam nyo meron kayong mga people with hearing impairment. So, kailangan magdadag kayo ng not only, especially not audible, kailangan ng mga visible signs para sa kanila. Kunyari, blinking lights, red lights, rotating lights, kahit na sa loob pa ng mga ng mga toilet para makita nila kung meron na tayong fire incident at sila ay maka-evacuate. Kung meron kayong mga small alleys na sa palagay mo kapag ka nawala ang ilaw or nagkaroon ng sunog, maaring maging madilim. So mag, mag-install na kayo ng mga rechargeable lights na po pwede mag-switch on once na mawala ang main power. Okay? So meron ka ng step 3. So, sa step 4, kailangan 
pagka na-implement mo na yung mga mitigation measures or control measures, i-record mo kung ano yung mga naging reaksyon or naging mga uh, so, uh, conclusion ng mga inilagay mong control measures para malaman mo kung po pwede mo pang baguhin ulit. Baka po pwede ka pang magdagdag. Baka yung, yung hearing impaired na empleyado is meron din pala siyang color blindness. So, paano pa ang dapat nyong gawin? So, pwede kayong mag-send or mag-train ng isang worker na po pwedeng maging fire warden na ang kanyang sole responsibility during a fire incident is to go through smaller rooms ensure that all the people are evacuated. Yun ang kanyang trabaho, hindi to fight fire, hindi to identify the fire, hindi to call, call the fire warden or call the fire manager, kundi hanapin yung mga posibleng taong nakapwesto pa sa lugar na hindi nila nakikita or nadidinig ang alarma. Alright? So, meron ka ng four step. The fifth step is review. Kasi ang risk assessment by legal or by legal regulations or by standard or uh, international best practices as dapat inire-review. Kailan mo yan dapat inire-review? Nire-review nyo yan every time number one kapag ka nagkaroon kayo ng insidente. Kung naka-evacuate nga talaga lahat ng tao in an orderly fashion, tama ang count, nagampanan ang count, sumunod ang mga tao sa assembly point, hindi, nag, hindi nagpadawar-dawar o nagpapunta-punta kung saan, nagnigarilyo, nagbili ng soft drinks, nagstay sila doon para maghintay ng uh, latest instructions. So, doon yung i-review Second, Our uh, second part ng pag-review kapag ka uh, sa timely um, aging ng inyong risk assessment. Uh, usually, it should be done yearly. So, using those five steps, magag magagawa nyo ang inyong fire evacuation procedure using your risk assessment. We have a lot of new viewers tonight, War. But before that, um, I'd like to invite uh, those who are watching us to like and follow Tatak Pinoy Loud and Proud Facebook page so that pag nag-follow kayo, you will receive a notification every time we go live for our safety talk. And subscribe to our channel as well, Tatak Pinoy UAE. Yan, uh, And, uh, of course, I invited you earlier para sa mga motivational videos, like and follow Kabayan Rico EMC. Meron yung uh, pinakabago kong video on hazard identification. Now, batiin muna natin ito mga nanonood sa atin, War, kasi mga bago. Um, Orlando Makaraig from Ras Al um, oh. Arnold Villanueva from Dubai. Ton Bidara from Riyadh. Annalisa Velasco is also watching. Arman Marine from Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. uh, Bili ba ko sa comment itong si Falcon 7? No? Very nice segment to learn new things and calibrate personal knowledge about health and safety. Um, itanong pala si, si Carlo. I have to read it because sometimes I have memory lapses. I'm excited and I tend to forget that the, we have uh, one question. Uh, ito ang, ang question ni... Um, sana ba yung ah. Sir, anong fire equipment to be installed in building switch gear area from Carlo Yero? Anong fire uh, fighting system? Um, anong fire equipments to be installed in building switch gear area? Switch gear area, so electrical. Uh, That means sa, sa, sa electrical areas, right? Ah. Okay, sa so pagka mga switchgear area, kailangan mo dyan, especially kung enclosed siya, meron tayong tinatawag na halon gas technique or halon gas fire system na ang ginagawa niya is binavacuumize niya yung area and it releases halon gas. At ang karakteristik nitong halon gas na to is uh, it's something like 
it's it eats up the oxygen inside. The, at alam naman natin with with our fire triangle, what what is the three elements of fire? You have the source, you have or the source of ignition, you have the fuel or the combustible materials and pre-existing oxygen in the atmosphere. So kapag ka na vacuumize yung area at nirelease mo yung halon gas, it's not uh, wet or anything na hindi magkakaroon ng short circuit sa inyong switch gear. Yan din ang ginagamit sa mga uh, server rooms na malalaki no. Lalo at din sa mga uh, bank bolts lalo na kapag may mga perishable na materials. Kapag ka nagkaroon ng sunog, nagba-vacuumize yung area na yon, magre-release ng halon gas. Yung halon gas within minutes kakainin niya ang existing oxygen sa loob ng area. So ang fire ay hindi magpo-flourish. Ang medyo risky lang dito kapag may tao sa loob at hindi siya nakalabas agad because it will not open until the atmosphere is considered um, as safe from fire. At yan ay electronic system yan. Hindi yan override We have more people watching. Uh, gusto kong batiin sila, War, because they, they deserve to be acknowledged because they're yes, actually course, putting their should. time as well. Um, I like the comment of Sonny Maranan. I, I'd like to share it on the screen. Uh, risk assessment has to be reviewed during internal audit. You know. um, in, in case uh, you have uh, ideas as well you would like to share, feel free to make a comment. Umbra Nawal from Jeddah is also watching. And uh, JR, JR, JR from Abu Dhabi is watching. And uh, meron pang isang nakita ko niya, Abdul Karim Sarael, watching from Riyadh, uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And even from Manila, I'm surprised Jean Annalyn Ventura is still wide awake. So <laughs> people are watching us and uh, request lang po paki-share sa ating live segment para marami pong matuto sa discussion yung binigay na kaalaman ni, ni Warren tonight. Ethan Mendoza is also watching. So let, let's continue our discussion. Nag, nagbanggit ka earlier, War, ng uh, electrical uh, hazard. So um, by just looking at uh, the area or having a visual inspection, War, ano yung mga electrical hazards na makikita agad by doing a visual inspection? Una-una, uh, yung paggamit natin ng trailing socket or tawag natin sa mga sa sa atin sabi yung extension cords kapag uh, merong uh, usually dapat talaga kapag uh, pag industrial area or yung sa office area dapat ang mga ang mga extension cords niyo is limited to 2 lang pero ngayon marami kang makikita tatlo apat at the same time may apat ng uh, power outlets meron pa siyang outlet for uh, USB connection So, yun, nakaka-overload yun. Lalo na kung hindi fused ang iyong uh, extension, uh, extension na bracket. So, yan ang number one na nakikita ko lagi. Automatic sa akin, fire hazard yan. Okay? At the same time, using those extension cables, hindi nila nilalagyan ng proper trenching or hindi nila nila layout sa gilid-gilid. So, nakalatag lang minsan sa, sa sahig. Kapag ka nag-trip ka, hindi ka man matumba, maaring mag-break mag yung kable from the main outlet and that kind of forcible removal magkaroon ng spark. So, it's another fire uh, hazard. At ang madalas ko rin nakikita, lalo na sa mga gypsum boards sa uh, inyong mga ceiling, may mga little bit of signs ng uh, leakages during rain o kaya may mga problema sa piping. So yung mga leakages na yon since dumaan na doon, it seems na pwede siyang dumaan sa mga wiring nyo. Maaring mag-start ng short circuit din. Okay? At yung pinababayaan ng mga electrical equipment overnight. Madalas din yan kapag ka nag... Uh, for your information, nagpapanggabi rin ako madalas nag inspection ako ng mga offices. Mga empty offices na, bukas pa ang mga ilaw, bukas pa ang mga 
AC nila, bukas pa ang mga printing equipment nila, lahat switched on. So, who knows kung anong klaseng problema ang mang- maaaring mangyari. So, we need to make sure na sini-switch up natin ang ating mga electrical equipment pagkatapos natin magtrabaho. So, yun yung mga normal na na-overlook sa isang office setup. At the same time, ang pinakaayoko pagka nasa construction area ko is nakakakita ko ng mga splice repair. Alam mo yun? Yung nagkaroon ng konting breakage sa kanilang cable, kakat ng electrician, i-splice nila, babalatan nila, bubuksan yung mga core, pagdudugtungin, electrical tape lang. Hindi hindi tama yun eh, kasi susceptible yun sa, sa water leakage, water seepage, at mag-start ng electrical short circuit. So dapat yan, kapag ka may breakage ng inyong kable, kung maliit na, putulin na from the end. Palitan na. Kung mahaba naman, cut it off, tapos lagyan mo ng male and female na sockets. At doon mo siya pagdudugtungin para mas safe. Since uh, we are still discussing about the electrical hazards war, um, karamihan kasi sa mga safety practitioners, lalo na pag yung baguhan is, I, I, the main reason that I have to ask you this is I don't want to presume that all safety practitioners can handle this thing. Yung, yung pag merong uh, electrocution, no? Mm-hmm. Um, Ayoko nang uh, baka meron tayong mga baguhan na hindi alam so for the old timers consider this as a refresher no ano ba yung steps na dapat nating gawin pag may kasama tayo na, na suffering from electrocution or being electrocuted ano yung mga step na dapat gawin okay so with that saying nakita ko ang gusto ang gusto mong itanong is Electrocution on a high voltage equipment or facility. Kasi sa normal na electrical cable, patulad nito, pwede ako ma-electrocute pero pwede ko naman siyang bitawan agad. Eh. So no harm, only a little bit of pain. Pero kung okay. nasa mga malalaking uh, uh, power source ka, katulad ng mga 40 kb na substation, at dun ma-electrocute ang kasama mo, First of all, is ensure na malayo ka sa kanya. Stay away agad. Okay? Secondly, tingnan mo kung ano yung klase ng... Kasi pag ang electrocution, may dalawang bagay yan. Eh. Pwedeng it will throw you out or suck you in. If he was thrown out, better. You can immediately call for an emergency help or first aider. Huwag mo siyang hahawakan agad kasi meron pang remnant electricity sa kanyang katawan. Lalo na kung nakikita mo, kung nagsishake pa. Okay? But make sure na try to get his attention. Try to get, try to find out kung nandun pa yung kanyang responsiveness, yung kanyang consciousness. And try to keep on talking to him until help arrives. Hanggang dun lang naman ang kaya mong gawin. Ngayon, if he was sucked in, check first your environment. I know, madaling sabihin yan. Sabihin mo, pag nandudong ka na, hindi mo na alam gagawin mo. But that's why we're talking about, at we're talking here, para ma- ma-repress yung iyong awareness. So, make sure na nakita mo yung environment, tingnan mo yung environment mo. Wet ba ang floor? If hindi, okay. Pwede mo siyang lapitan, provided na kumpleto ka sa insulated gear. Insulated ang yung shoes, hindi basa ang yung coveralls at the same time ang yung hard hat ay uh, may rating para sa anti electric shock next is you need to push him out but not with your hands not even if you have insulated gloves hindi mo alam kung gaano kalakas yung electricity na nagpo-flow so other you use a non conducting material like fiberglass rod plastic rod or wood na hindi basa ha and then you can push him off kung saan man siya nakadikit after that start your emergency or first aid protocol by calling the first aiders do not touch him 
try to get his attention, try to find out if he's still conscious or responsive. Ngayon, kung wala ka naman makitang kahoy or plastic na tubo na pwede mong pantulak, you can very well use your safety shoes. Sipahin mo siya, palabas. Palayo dun sa electric source. Ayan. Sigurado ako with the kind of comments that we are receiving, maraming natutunan. Even the non-safety practitioners are admiring of what she learned. Uh, my friend uh, Jing Analin Bintora from Manila. Uh, ang business nito is yung mga scrap iron. No? But hmm. uh, I am impressed because she noticed the importance of what we are discussing here tonight. Um, we are running out of time. Lumag pas tayo, isang oras na mahigit. So I'd like to entertain uh, another question, but we will. War, can you join me again next Saturday? Let, let's continue. No problem. Uh, I am yeah. all for it. We, oh, we um, will deal. On, yeah, we will deal on precautionary measures this time. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Masarap na pag-usapan. Because for the precautionary measures, you can always use your technical know-how at the same time. Use mm -hmm. your imagination. Yan. Uh, we'd like to entertain the final question from Arman Marine. Uh, ito. Ito yung uh, tanong niya, War, which is very interesting with the, with the technology that we are using. How is uh, health, safety, and environment parameters as compared 10 years ago with uh, the changes and the effect of modern technology now? So, yan. Ang closing question natin, War. Okay. So, ang tanong niya is yung mga parameters or what are the usable technological innovations na nagagamit natin ngayon. Like for example, pagdating sa working at heights, previously, kailangan mo pang gumamit ng metro para makita mo yung actual na height na pagtatrabahohan nila. Ngayon, meron na tayong distance checker using infrared. Point it out, the location na gusto mong makita or yung platform na gusto mong makita from where you're, point, well, where you're standing, which is basically the ground, so that will be your drop point. Makakita mo na agad ang exact distance. Medyo may kamahalan yung equipment, pero kung talagang interesado ang inyong kumpanya sa uh, mas epektibong pagbabantay, pagsisigurado, at pag-insure ng kaligtasan ng workers, it can be used. Di ba? The same time, meron din tayong ginagamit na termo. Thermomonitor or thermosensor. Kung meron kayong mga heating activities sa inyong area, pwede nyo malaman agad using that thermosensor. Ibibigay niya sa iyo yung actual na um, heat register. Nung, nung surface na yon. So, sa tanong ni Arman Marin, 10 years ago, there are so many innovations na nagbago. Ang hindi lang nagbago is ang, sorry to say, attitude and behavior. Attitude and behavior of some of the workers, attitude and behavior of some of the foreman and supervisors, attitude and behaviors of engineers and managers, along with attitude of some HSE practitioners. So, katulad nitong ginagawa natin ngayon, Mr. Rico, I hope na yung attitude is ma-improve. Technology will always be innovated. Technology will always be improved. Technology will always help. It's up to us kung paano ito gamitin. Ayan. Um, let, let's uh, find out kung meron pang... Uh... Additional or follow-up questions si... Um, sana ba yung kaibigan natin? Um, sabi nga ni Arnold uh, Likigan, abangan ko ulit, sir, yung next discussion. Next week, we will deal on the precautionary measure para marami tayong matutunan. And uh, by the way, War, hey. sa lahat na nanonood sa atin ngayon, just comment there yung email address ninyo. I will send you a PDF copy of my book. Uh, the 12 Habits of Highly Successful OFWs. I will send you, again, PDF copy of this book. 
so that you can read the 12 habits of highly successful OFWs. Warren, would you like to thank those who are watching us tonight? Hi, again, salamat at uh, I'm very thankful na nakinig kayo at I, I'm hoping na kung merong mga naglilinger na katanungan sa inyong isipan regarding health and safety is uh, patuloy naming matugunan, masagot at mabigyan ng kaliwanagan. At dun sa mga nagnanais na makapagsimula, keep on uh, logging into this uh, safety talk. At uh, hindi lang yung mga risks, yung mga mitigations. Huh? Uh, risk and mitigations. At pati yung kung paano kayo makakapagsimula sa inyong karir. Salamat na marami at uh, sa susunod or hanggang sa muli. Yan. Uh, pasalamatan ko ulit yung uh, wife mo and your kids for letting you join me tonight kasi quality time, importante ah, yun sa uh, family. Well, shout out to my eldest son, Yuri Natividad, kasi it makes me feel proud dahil he's giving or showing interest on following my footsteps. Yan, yan, maganda yan. In, uh, in oh. having a career in health and safety practice. I hope that um, makapagbigay ako sa kanya ng mga tamang katugunan. Well, eh, maganda yan kasi na yung yung anak mo yung nakikita na, uy, dapat susundan ko yung yapak ng ama ko. Oh. Um, again, War, uh, my sincere thanks for uh, your effort of sharing with us and to those who are watching us, yung mga magandang uh, insights and learning to enhance their competency as far as safety is concerned. Maraming salamat po and we'll see you again next Saturday. Mas maganda kasi precautionary measure na ang pag-usapan namin ni Warren. War, right. again, maraming salamat from Tatak Pinoy, loud and proud. And uh, yan, mga kababayan, please share this video para ma-review naman. Uh, anyway, hindi naman mawawala ito eh. You can still review this video um, once uh, the live coverage is over. Para sabi nga nila eh, repetition is the mother of learning. The more you view things, you will be more familiar at it will add to your competency. Maraming salamat for joining. We'll see you again next Saturday. And ako, I may sound like a broken record, but I have to say it again and again. Huwag po tayong lumabas na walang face mask. Maganda nga, mayroong hand gloves. Pero kung, kung hindi, face mask and observe social distancing, which is also important. Uh, wash hands frequently. And ang pinaka-importante talaga, Pray before you sleep and pray upon waking up in the morning because there's only one power that can save us and can protect us in this pandemic that we are facing, the power of God. Keep safe always and good night.